What is up, Solglitch here. Today I'm gonna to give you a bit of a comprehensive breakdown of what exactly happens with my voice. Everything that happens in between my microphone and front of house, all the things that my vocals go through to give me the flexibility to do a lot of cool stuff on stage. People are always asking me about how I do the stuff that I do on stage. And there's a lot of different things that I'm doing. So uh, let's get right to it. So first off, I'm using a wireless version of the Telefunken M80 microphone. This is a great vocal microphone. One of the things I really love about this microphone is its low impedance. And that allows me to deal with things like feedback because I'm using a lot of glitches and delays on stage that can make the difference between having crazy feedback and not having feedback at all. Great microphone, it sounds really good. My vocals just sound great through this particular microphone. Now this capsule is using a Shure SLX2 transmitter, which is going to a receiver in my rack over here. Then that signal is coming over to my pedal board here through an XLR cable. So the first thing I put my vocals through before I put them through anything else on this board is the TC Helicon Perform VK. This has a great tone that it puts on my vocals. It allows me to add reverb. There's a couple of presets that I use for maybe like a radio voice or putting some flanger here and there, but it's very cool, very programmable with MIDI. This also has a great harmonizer built in. It's very easy to program the exact harmonies you want with MIDI through Ableton Live. You can set it to a manual harmonizer, have the exact notes through Ableton. So I do that on some of my songs. From here, my vocals go into this infinite sample sustainer by TC Electronic. This is a great pedal, which allows me to sustain my vocals in a very smooth and infinite way, which is why it's called infinite. You know, let me give you a quick comparison. If I was gonna do a sample of my voice through the chaos pad, it would sound like this. Now you can hear, this has a very notable click. Now, if I were gonna do this with the TC Electronic Infinite pedal, it would sound like this. It's very smooth. You can also sample as many layers as you want on this thing. For example. So it's very smooth, really cool, but it's only so cool. So what I do in addition to laying down samples through this is it has a send and return. So that send and return is going into this slicer pedal right here. This pedal has a lot of different presets on it, so. So I have a lot of fun with that. And the signal before it goes back into the return of the infinite pedal also goes through this board brain patch bay. And what that allows me to do is I can basically send and return this signal to pretty much anything else um, that I want to. Right now, it's not going to anything, but I can send it to this Maris pedal. It has these different stutters that are programmed in, and you mess with the knobs, you can find different stutters. It also has a down sampler, so you can do some bit crushing. So after the infinite, my voice then goes through the Maris Polymoon, which is a really great delay pedal. Also very programmable by Ableton, as is the auto bit, which I'll save for another video. So from there, my signal goes back to my rig over here and into Ableton through my iConnectivity audio interface. So let's get back over to Ableton. Now via the iConnectivity interface, my vocal signal is in my computer. It's going through this box track. So the first thing I have here on my vocal chain is a soft reducer which is basically a gate that I found helps minimize the kind of noise that comes from putting my voice through all of the pedals on my pedal board and all the electronics going on. There's a little bit of noise and it's not super harsh. It doesn't cut my voice off or anything, pretty minimal. So the next thing I have going through my vocal chain is Isotope Nectar Plus. This is a great plugin, just adds, you know, just adds a little bit, just a little bit more of a, of a body to the sound. I've got a little bit of saturation a little bit of EQ and a little bit of a compressor on here. After the Nectar, I've got it going through another vocal rack, uh, which is mostly an EQ and I've got a vocoder um, that's automated to come on and off. 
because I use vocoder on one of my songs. So that's automated off right now. I've got some multiband dynamics that I don't have on right now. I'm constantly experimenting with different things. I think that I turned that off because I was using dynamics through Nectar. So that's off right now, but it's there because again, I'm always experimenting with stuff. After that, it's going through a ballad reverb. I've experimented around with micro shift and overdrive, but I haven't really been using those too much. I've got an ambience that's turned off. I'm not using that right now. So I've got a parallel processing rack right here. I, honestly, I'm not even really sure why, but one of them is a little bit of reverb and then the other one is some more EQ. I've got a micro shift plugin. This is automated to come on and off. I use it on some songs. I don't use it on others, but that's there. So now I have several loopers set up in this vocal track. Um, there's a little bit of complicated things I do with looping. Sometimes I'll have multiple things looping at the same time and you know everything's automated to come in and come out at certain points. Okay, now after all that, I have uh, several loopers set up somewhere towards the end of my vocal chain in Ableton. I'm not gonna get too much into the loopers, but I will say that it's all automated. I don't have any triggers to loop stuff. I basically have a lot of stuff in my songs where I have a cue track in my ear telling me to loop things at certain times. You know, I've got one looper here. I've got another effect rack with uh, two different loopers here. The reason for that, it's, it's too like, it's too crazy for me to explain right now, but it makes a lot of sense when you're laying down different things that come in and out at different points in a song and you just need things to be automated at certain points. I'm definitely gonna do a much more comprehensive breakdown of how to do looping in Ableton Live and how to automate everything so you can focus on performing and not have to worry about pressing buttons to loop here and pressing other buttons to overdub or start and stop the loops. It's really cool what you can do with Ableton Live. So subscribe now if you're not because there's gonna be a video coming on that soon if it hasn't released already yet. After most of those loopers, I have this LFO tool. So this LFO tool is mapped to this slider right here on my keyboard. If I wanted to get some LFO stuff going on. One of the reasons I have the LFO tool here after some of the loopers is Sam transitioning to a song that is a, uh, a different tempo. So one of the reasons I have this LFO tool set up is because if I wanna to transition to a song that is a different speed, it's gonna change the pitch of my voice that I've recorded in the looper. So one of the things I do to get around that, I will have whatever looper I'm using uh, not quantized with the song. So the loop will not change with the tempo change, but if I use this LFO tool and loop that into another looper, Take the loop, this is complicated, I don't even know how to explain this, it's very, it's very tough. I might have to do another video where I show you exactly how that works. So mapped to this one control is not only the LFO tool, this beat repeat is also mapped to the same slider on my keyboard. So when I move the slider up, the LFO depth goes up and at some point it turns on the vocal fun. Then again, got another looping pedal. If I wanna loop something over in this looper, send it through the LFO tool and the beat repeat, and then loop that into this other loop. That's why it's called an after loop. Like I said, I'm gonna have to make more videos about this kind of stuff. After my vocal chain, I've got that in a group with my vocal harmonies. Some of my songs, I am using the TC VK for MIDI programmed harmonies. In some cases, I just like the way my backgrounds sound from the produced track. So I've got my vocal harmony set up. That in combination with my vocal track is going through this grouped all vox track. So now I have this group track, which is basically a bus for my vocals and my vocal harmonies that I have in Ableton. And I have this artillery plugin, which is very cool. I have it sitting uh, within this bus basically because I wanna be able to, at the same time, glitch out my live vocals and my harmonies in the back track. So this is a way to do that. This artillery plugin is pretty cool. There's a lot of different presets and over here on my keyboard, I've got all these pads here. Each of these pads basically triggers a different kind of effect within the artillery plugin. So a lot of chopping. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff in there. After all of that, there's a lot of stuff that my vocals have gone through. I've also got my vocals going through a couple different sends in Ableton, which has some more delay effects and some more glitching stuff going on. So I've got these two sliders right here. So this first slider, this is a, this is a pretty cool send.
that's kind of a cool delay that uh, just, just keeps going. First, that delay is going through uh, this Replicant 2. So this Replicant 2 is a really cool kind of stutter. So, so you can hear there's a little bit of a stutter effect going on there. And then out of that return track, it's also being sent to a ping delay, which kind of allows me to put on a very sustained delay and use that effect. And the second slider is doing something pretty similar. It's first going to a beat repeat, and then it's going from the beat repeat to, guess what, another ping delay. A little bit different than the other one. I think it's a little bit of a faster effect, so. So again, that's a little bit similar to the first sin. Having these two sliders, in addition to this one right here, allows me to do a lot of cool stuff just with Ableton. Having these three sliders and some glitching capabilities with these pads right here, and having some different ways to chop up my vocals, in addition to having all the stuff I have on my pedal board, really gives me a lot more in my toolbox so I can really change up the different kind of glitches and delays that I do on stage. All right, so that's pretty much it for a bit of a breakdown of what my vocal chain is for my live performance. So if you have any questions at all about how I do what I do with Ableton Live, any questions about my outboard gear, any questions about Ableton, please let me know in the comments and I'd love to make more videos for you, nerding out with you about live production. Have a good one.